Thank you. Uh, next question, we'll start with Charlie Jones, area four. Student safety is on so many people's minds, especially when we're still less than a year removed from the scary situation just down the road at Fairlands Elementary when a intruder made his way onto the campus and camped out in a storage room overnight unnoticed. How do you assess the district's record on the physical well-being and mental health of students? What more can be done to better support students in these areas as they carry out their education in Pleasanton schools? As a teacher, for the last eight years, I have been in a total of five lockdowns and I've had two of my students shot at some point. So this is very personal for me and something I have experienced firsthand. I don't think Pleasanton is doing enough. I know we're not doing enough because, uh, sorry, it's just, like I said, it's personal for me. I watched as our school board almost cut counselors, both mental and academic at our school sites this year, almost one to two at each until the community stood up and said no and fought back on that. So I do not think we're where we need to be when it comes to mental health. And for security, this community has made clear that they do feel the need for an SRO to be at the different sites, but we do not have that at every single one of our sites. And when we did pull the community about that, we actually did not check it by ethnic demographic makeup either. We just said, oh, the majority would like that. But just because the majority says it, if the minority is feeling uncomfortable, which groups are feeling uncomfortable? How do we know if they are feeling safe from that? So if we are going to have SROs, let's make sure that we do this right. Well, let's also start with, again, mental health, making sure that we have these counselors every single day at these sites. Did you know that our district actually can get funding from the county for Alameda County Board of Education for the Medi-Cal buyback program, where they'll, they'll actually pay for the mental health of our students when, they, when it seems an emergency or it's needed? So that the family doesn't have to pay for that. It's a program they started this year to help with mental services for students. It's fantastic, and most families don't know about that opportunity. So yeah, there's a lot we could be doing for safety and mental health. That's personal for me. I've seen what happens to students when they don't have that mental health support. I don't wish that on any family. I saw that happen with mine. Thank you. Thank you. Donald Harris, area three. Regarding um, PUSD security, we are very lucky that we have um, parents and grandparents and community members who, who serve um, in roles that function as eyes and ears watching over our students. Um, but we're two adults for 750 elementary students. I mean, we can do the math. That's, that's, that's really not very much. Um, I did also um, hear from um, from a couple of folks who were part of the school site council meeting um, when the school safety plan came up. Um, it was treated rather cursorily, cursorily quickly, um, and uh, and a lot of folks didn't feel like it had the kind of time and attention that it really deserved. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's something that should be at the forefront of our discussions when we when we talk about caring for our students and uh i think that unfortunately you know we've been so desensitized to um, acts of violence that that happen in our in, in our schools when we take for granted that it's just going to happen when really we need a reality check um, we need to reset from zero um, our responsibility to um, look out not only for our students but for all of our staff all of our community members who um, are looking out over, looking for, looking out for our kids. Um, and yes, as, as Mr. Jones says, wellness is safety uh, and ensuring that we have adequate staffing and funding for wellness at not just our high schools, but our middle schools and our elementary schools as well can really prevent a lot of um, unkind situations from from happening and escalating. Thank you. Thank you. Tell Gashi, area three. 
Yes, so I first like to start out with some of the efforts the district has done around uh, overall student emotional well-being. Uh, there are some celebrations. First, uh, some of the programs in place, NTSS, uh, PBIS, these are uh, behavior uh, structures in place for our students. There are curriculums in place that support uh, social emotional learning for our students. Those are accolades that we can celebrate. However, there are always places where we can improve. It's no lie, the effects of the pandemic are still here. Our students are suffering. That is why it's paramount that the district find, and I support 100%, uh, support for our schools, uh, school counselors. I saw firsthand how uh, the school counselor for my son was in middle school and how she made a difference in his life to actually come to school. There are challenges in regard to uh, anti-bullying situations with our students and how to deal with conflict. That is actually the other efforts with our school resource officers. It is true we don't have enough of uh, them. There's been a challenge with funding. We're partnering with the city um, and thankfully they're helping to fund the school resource officers. The school resource officers are oftentimes the first person to engage with a student where there might be a challenge. And one of their roles is not only to provide a sense of safety, but also to work and build relationships with our students. So yes, there are challenges. I would say that the district was very responsive to some of the security issues. There's been funding with Measure I-1 to uh, highlight gate security, security cameras around our campuses, and certainly the district will continue to ensure the safety of our students. But at the end of the day, it's really about how do our students feel? Do they feel safe? And I would say, yes, we will continue to provide supports for them. Thank you. Thank you. And Jen Flynn, Area 4. Thank you. So safety is number one priority. I've been at the school sites when the children are hiding under their desks and the teachers are emailing me saying, call here. I've also been at the school site when you get an email from a teacher saying, we're missing someone and we need to go find that student. Your heart pounds through your chest as you race through the school trying to find that student to ensure their safety. The gates that are the the fences that have been put around the district schools are helpful. The doors now at the offices are now locked and you must buzz to get in. These are all very important thing that the bond, things that the bond measure has brought to us. Um, supporting the SRO programs, I have been to those city council meetings where we have fought to continue those programs. I have introduced myself to the SRO, SRO officers. As a parent, I want my children to know them as well. I would love to see these SRO programs brought to the elementary students so that they recognize these people as they go up into high school. It's not just something that is thrown at them in high school. I would say that my children alone, um, I actually asked them, do you know what an SRO officer is? And they said, no, they don't. So I think it's really important that we start them young and introduce that program to them so that they feel safe going to that person. Like I said, I've been at the district office for safety, fire safety, drills. It's, it's very scary for the little ones. I think we continue to do that and mix up our drills a little bit so that it's not just procedure and they actually understand that this is a scary thing that really could happen. Thank you. Thank you. 